This is a case of a pectopexy for urogenital prolapse in a very fatty patient. The first step is to seal and cut the, the right round ligament and as you see, we are bothered by the intestine falling into our surgical field even we try to pull up this intestine. The next step is to follow the medial aspect of the external iliac vein and our goal is to reach the pectineal ligament, which is just a downward of the external iliac vein and in this uh, very fatty patient it's important to ensure the hemostasis on the uh, pelvic left node which are sometimes very fragile. You can see we now encounter our right pectineal ligament and we do the same maneuver on the left side, we open the peritoneum lateral to the left IP ligament, we follow the medial aspect of the external artery and vein, and we pull in the fatty tissue, and you can see at this level we encounter the corona mortis, which is an anastomotic vein between the external iliac vein and the obturative vein, and after sealing and cutting this vein, we reach the pectineal ligament that will be used for encoring the mesh later. The next step of the procedure is the vesicovaginal dissection and for that we use the uterine manipulator that allows us to pull the uterus toward the sacrum and to see clearly the vesicovaginal peritoneum. It's important to cut this peritoneum from one round ligament to the other and if you follow the bubble, you can identify the correct plane for the vesicovaginal dissection. It's important as well, before doing the vesicovaginal dissection, to identify both bladder pillar and to seal and cut the bladder pillar for a better vesicovaginal dissection. You see, if you are in the right plane, the dissection is quite simple and our goal is to reach the trigon area and um, uh, medially and the lateral aspect of the vagina because more you are deep and lateral and better your uh, functional and anatomical outcome will be good. You can see we follow the dissection deeper and deeper till we reach the trigon area. Normally, the dissection must be carried out on a 10 cm. We put now a sponge for hemostatic reason. It's a postmenopausal patient, so we have the use to do a subcutal hysterectomy with bilateral length. Adenectomy. We follow the classical steps for uh, a simple hysterectomy, sealing and cutting the posterior leaf of the broad ligament. We do the same on the right side, we identify the posterior leaf of the broad ligament, and we do a window just below the right IP. We seal and cut the IP and we cut the posterior leaf of the brow ligament and this maneuver allows us to skeletonize as better than possible the right uterine pedicle. This pedicle will be sealed and cut at the east peak level because for the prolapse surgery we spare the cervix and this cervix must be have a pap test and an HPV test and we do the same 
on the left side we seal and cut the uterine pedicle you can see the procedure is completely bloodless if you follow this simple rule we will do a subtotal hysterectomy for that we use a monopolar needle that uh, is placed in the left operative troca and you see the procedure is uh, bloodless and it's time to close the remnant cervix for two reasons the first one is to close the endocervical canal to decrease the risk of uh, vaginal ascending infection and the second particularly in obese patient like this patient this stitch uh, allows us to do a cervicopexy and to open the posterior compartment because in our technique we always correct the posterior compartment by placing a mesh in the rectovaginal space but this dissection is not as deep as we do usually for sacrocolpopexy we cut the fatty tissue till we arrive to the anal canal but we don't uh, uh, do a deep dissection lateral to the anal canal we don't go to the both pararectal fossas you can see how this patient is the fatty one and now we can place a cross-shaped mesh and we will fix the mesh firstly on the cervix the remnant cervix and we use for that an absorbable vicryl tackers firstly on the cervix and in the second time on the posterior aspect of the vagina and if you use these uh, tackers uh, there is absolutely no risk for mesh erosion like sometimes we see when we use uh, non-absorbable stitches so the posterior compartment is treated now we have to remove the stitch and to place the mesh on the anterior vagina as you see we began by the upper part and we plastered our mesh on the anterior vagina and this procedure is quite easy with the tacker quite quick because you have just to apply the tacker and to place the mesh and it's really important not to shrink the mesh on the anterior vagina for a better anatomical outcome let's now cut the mesh excess and the job is done for the anterior and posterior vaginal aspect. Now we will uh, connect the anterior and posterior mesh on the cervical area with a non-absorbable stitch which is an ATBO1 and we will connect on the right and on the left and you can see how this intestine fall down on operative field. So we do the same fixation on the right side of the cervix and we use extracorporeal knotting technique for the closer. And for the prolapse surgery, it's mandatory to have uh, excellent knowledge of all the uh, suturing technique. Now let's fix uh, the lateral arms of the mesh on the pectineal ligament. We have to use to paste two times in the pectineal ligament and uh, it's mandatory to be as posterior than possible after we will paste three times through the lateral arm the right one the stitch is uh, 81 and we will close the 
stitch by extracorporeal knotting technique, like you see, and it's mandatory for the mesh to be plastered on the pectinea ligament. We will cut now the mesh excess and we will anchor the mesh on the left side in the same manner. Etibon 1 stay as posterior as possible and in my opinion it's better to do two passages for a better security. It's an Etibon 1. It's a 14 mm needle and as I said we paste three times in the lateral left mesh arm. I recommend to do an extracorporeal knotting technique because this technique plastered the mesh in a very good situation. You can see the mesh is well plastered. You can cut the mesh excess. And now the most important step of the pectopexy is to shrink the two lateral arms. And we will try to align the two arms for the perfect prolapse correction. If you don't do this step, your uh, prolapse will be not correct as desired. As you see, it's an uh, Etibon 1 non absorbable stitch, and uh, we do a running suture. And you can see the stitch paced through the remnant cervix, and after closing the knot, you will see that both lateral arms are completely aligned and the prolapse is completely reduced if you have the vaginal look. It's mandatory to do uh, peritonization to decrease the risk of uh, postoperative bowel adhesion or bowel occlusion. We use for that uh, monofilament 1 and we will connect the vesicovaginal peritoneum with the prorectal peritoneum and with this technique you intraperitonize all the meshes, the anterior one and the posterior one, in one step. And if you follow all these uh, simple rules, uh, after 20 procedures, the surgeon can do the entire procedure in less than uh, 1 hour 30. We will close the stitch by extracorporeal knotting technique and we will prepare ourselves for the morselation. So this is our technique for doing uh, pectopexy in a fatty patient. I hope this video was interesting for the numerous surgeon who follow me. This is the final aspect. Thank you for attention and see you for my next video.